Well, I did have an almost undying love for Kurt Wimmer's Equilibrium. I mean, let's be honest. When I saw Gun Carter, I thought <laughs> this is the most amazing thing I have ever seen in my, in how, my entire how, life. How quickly can we fire Mark? <laughs> I know, I love but, that. but on subsequent rewatches, you do kind of go, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's, not, yeah, it's not really but, that good, is it? But <laughs> I like that. But oh, you're yeah. Gonna, you're going to hold on to that love for stealth, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Hello and welcome to the AV Forums Movies and TV podcast for April 2024. Tonight, I'm joined by Tom Davis. Hello, I've hurt my back. He, he has. He's hurt his back. Uh, Mark Costello. Hello, I've hurt my toe. Oh. Wait, are you just making stuff up? Of course I am. Oh, uh, go fine. I'm mocking and, his pain, and so, that's nice, nice, <laughs> nice. And Simon Crust. Hi, I've hurt my elbow. As what have you hurt? I'm fine. His I'm emotions, fine. <laughs> and I'm, I'm I'm currently touching wood and hoping yeah. that sorry happens. <laughs> <laughs> Did you what, Kaz? I mean, I know you're looking forward that's to this, mate. But that's, that's a little bit too much to share. Uh Right, for our April Movies and TV podcast, we'll be going through a top 10 list of things to watch in April. Um, there's been some nice TV additions to this, and a whole bunch of nines. We're all about the nines at the moment, which is crazy. I mean, it's going to be the best month of the year by far. Um, and we're going to then dive into our topic of the month, which is what makes a top 10 movie or TV show? Uh, first, competitions. Uh, the big one is you can win a set of Kef LSX2 LT wireless speakers worth 899 <sighs> This pair of speakers is a streamlined version of LSX2 model and shares the same immersive high-fidelity sound and many of the key technologies, but with a more wallet-friendly price tag. The winner gets to choose the finish of their choice from sage green, stone white, or graphite grey. The green is handsome. It's handsome, I say. You, you, you can't end that. I, don't, I, I was just fine. Competition closes in a few days. 11.59, Thursday, 25th of April. It'd be hilarious if it closed before this podcast went live. Especially after <laughs> I the voice. Uh, previous winners, RGB1231, a pair of brand new Q Acoustics uh, M40 speakers worth £749. Very of nice. Very nice. And Irritated Badger is slightly less irritating. Now, one of Valencia Tuscany XL Ultimate Luxury Onyx Cinema Seat worth £2,200. Let's see him get it in his set. I think he wanted the one in stage <laughs> green. <laughs> That's why he's irritated. <laughs> uh, new patrons, the box. Thank you, and bought us a coffee. Matt Evans and Mister Black seventy nine. There's Thank also you. A, a bunch of competitions for for the movies and TV stuff. A few competitions from Mark's delicious top ten for April, wow. and a couple of. 4K competitions uh, just added for Ealing, the Ealing sets that um, Simon reviewed. Mm -hmm. So head over, Fab. get some competitions. Uh, let's have a look at our top 10 for April. What didn't make the list is Disney's Wish. Nobody wants to talk about Disney's Wish. Oh, um, can, we, can we not at least talk about how great Chris Pine is in it? Because uh, mm, he yeah. is. He sure. That's the good thing about it. It's a very limited good thing. It's a very, I will very never watch thing. it again just for Chris Pine, despite him being good. It's not enough reason to watch it again. Netflix's remake of Wages of Fear. I don't think I'll watch in the first place because of your review, Tom. I mean, Can you imagine if that had made the top ten? What a what a meager month it would yeah, have been. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, there hasn't been like a title below seven, and there's actually a couple more in the offing, uh, which could could push it up to more eights and nines um and at the time of recording we haven't had the chance mark's going to go and see abigail oh yes uh we're hoping to see the zendaya drama challenges maybe but i don't know i'm looking for Are we looking for Are volunteers we? yeah no. i mean it's not mark so there no. we go so maybe not who knows and um and everyone's up for more rebel moon 
So what? that'll be that'll be great. That'll That's be- no moon. <laughs> Two thumbs up. That's what makes a ten out of ten movie. <laughs> That's, That's not a nose. That's a big part of poo. God. <laughs> um, what have we got in the list left? We have uh, the end we started from, number ten. Uh, American Rust, Broken Justice, uh, number nine. That's on Amazon for those who can't find it on Amazon. Um, Kung Fu Panda, four. Um, is it number eight? Uh, Monkey Man, really enjoyed that. Dev Patel, directed, uh, gives it as all. It's sure, it's Indian John Wick, but it's a bit more than that. And uh, kudos for him for trying. Um, uh, the first omen. Mark was surprised by that. <laughs> you bet your ass I was. I mean, it was called the first omen, and I expected it to be absolute drivel. But you gave it a seven out of ten, and it made the number six on this. I did well. I mean, look, let, let's be honest. Any film called the first omen. I mean, you should have heard the conversations you had with my mates. You know, the first omen. It's pretty good. Yeah, it scared me as a kid. No, 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 no. <laughs> the first omen. Yeah, yeah, that one from years. No, oh, Jesus, forget it. Uh, so, apart from hilarious titling, no one wanted a prequel. No one needed a prequel. It was obviously going to be utter crap. And I'll be honest, the story. Well, the, the story is the weakest part by a long shot. It takes huge liberties with the lore of the first film. However. I don't know what our Cassius Stevenson has been drinking, smoking, snorting, reading, watching, you name it. Considering this was her feature debut, it's been smashed out the park. It looks amazing. It's dripping in atmosphere. It's got a real 70s gritty vibe to it. And and not just that, uh, an Italian 70s vibe to it, which is so my jam. Uh, so, yeah, colour me very, very surprised. I could have honestly done without the sequel baiting final shot. This should have been a one and done and lit. Yeah, but you're going to watch it, Mark. Well, I am now, to be fair. (laughs) But it it just. Wait, hang on. Does the sequel not already exist in the form of the first? first. No, no, it's going to be the the second first omen. The second, second omen. The second Mm. omen. The first, second. Oh, I don't know. Omen Mm. two squared. Hang on. What? The first omen two. That, no, that doesn't work either. Two omen, omen, two omen. omener. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. It's, it's, it's good. It's good. It's better than it ever expected. It's probably a bit of a shame that it came out a week after Immaculate, which, considering I haven't seen Immaculate, by all accounts, it's virtually the exact same film. But hey-ho. Mm. Yeah, it's good. Go watch it. No. <laughs> 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 wow well it's there you usually, go <laughs> it's not usually cows that derails the i was podcast. gonna say look at that <laughs> it does actually sound good mark i've just got a lot of omen to catch up on if i have to watch it. it's gonna be like a nightmare on elm street thing no, all over no, again because on this one you start at the first one cast the clue which one do i start cool. with no which i start with this one <laughs> oh, <laughs> Move along. Nothing to see slash listen to here. I uh, didn't expect equally Godzilla XCOM. In, in fact, I'm going to say this about almost everything that we covered. There's a lot of didn't expects. I didn't mm. expect any of the following ratings. I didn't expect Go- Godzilla XCOM to be any good. They run in the trailer. I don't Love even it. watch trailers. They look like they... Batman and Robin when they run. It's great. Yeah, they, <laughs> they run in the trailer and I was like, this is going to be terrible. Took the kids to see it. It was n- absolute nonsense, but I had How a How could you watch that trailer and think this is going to be terrible? You watch that trailer and think this is going to be amazing. Like... No, I watched the trailer and saw them run, and I thought that it had proper jumped the shark. It's like that moment when, you, when you're on board with the Fast and Furious Fast Five hijinks. Yeah. And then you get, like, Fast X, and you see the trailer, and you're like, no, 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 no. But it does it does jump the shark, but it's a cool shark. So it's okay. It is, yeah. I mean I'm I'm okay. It was it jump it jumps the shark horizontally, flying and kicking with both legs. You know exactly what? that's how I it jumps really, the shark. really enjoyed this utter nonsense. It's a hoot. If the Transformers sequels were half as entertaining without being unpleasantly bad, I would equally rave about them. It's this it's is, good. That it takes itself as seriously as it deserves to take itself, which is <laughs> yeah. not at all. Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And Dan Stevens. And Dan He's, Stevens. Yeah. And Dan. Um, and very Dan. handsome man. Yeah. Um, Sugar. 
Uh, I don't know what honey, I expected honey. from this. Yeah, Apple's new noir TV show, um, Colin Farrell. I thought it was great. Mm. I thought it was going to be terrible mm -hmm. from the opening few minutes, which is set in black and white, and you can't quite guess the period straight off the bat. And, um, and it soon turns color and turns out to be a modern day romp. But absolutely, it, it is about a character. I mean, it's, it's clearly made by people who love the genre. And it is about a character who loves the genre. Mm -hmm. And there's something superb about writing it that way. I mean, Colin Farrell's character is a, is a private investigator and he's he he only does missing people's cases and he's all it's, it's all he's his whole character has been built on all of the uh, gary cooper Har humphrey bogart archetypes uh very moral i mean they flash images of them whenever he's doing his case but the genius thing about him is that he actually loves these movies himself he like obsesses over these movies and it it it's a it's a lovely kind of meta way to make it noir through and through um anything it's disappeared in the third episode i have not watched Trying the third a bit episode. too hard i haven't watched the third episode because the one fault i'm gonna lay on it is i can't abide 30 minute episodes for a weekly show i'm not having it if, if you're gonna give me 30 minute episodes sure either either lay down two or drop them all at once netflix style mm. if they're hour long give me them weekly if they're literally 30 minutes with credits, ah, no, I'm going to wait. I like how not arbitrary at all this is, Kaz. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a very not, small not, hill to die on. I am well, not doing it. Really I, I'm not doing it. Not, yeah, I did the 42. <laughs> I'm not doing the 30. I did 36. <laughs> I'm not doing... Uh, the last one was 32, oh. and I went, no. Oh, that's disappointing to hear, Sai, because I loved the first two episodes. Yeah, well, don't yeah, watch the third, um, because it's 32 minutes, and Sai should have known better. Oh. <laughs> it's all your fault, Sai. It might, it might pull itself back. I, I, it's, it's, try, it's trying to add in a bit of mystery that is a bit, oh, really. But we'll see. I might be mistaken. Mm. Uh, it's early days. Is, yeah. 30, 30, to go, so. 30 minutes later into it and it's ruined it should be 75 minutes long right all the best shows are 75 minutes long these days are they well i believe that, we're that, about that, to talk that, about that's one. a segue it's called oh, a God. segue Kat. okay no fallout which we this is another one isn't it this is all of them is like this fallout we're all ragging on before it comes down and we're all mocking mark no, because no, he's got you a... were ragging on it sure yep. sure and 100%. you thought it yeah we uh, that's going... quite good we were... yes no no before it came out we were oh. just mocking mark for... oh yeah he... but we do that anyway he had to yeah that's true. so many so many things to mock me for he had to he had to review it and the run times on the episodes are just insane it was like 75 72 uh 48 49 65 <laughs> 70 you know and it went on forever for eight episodes so um so 20 we'll... minutes of that is at is um adverts and uh credit so yeah but it turns out to be nine out of ten mark <laughs> loved it it's yeah. like so, what? what can he, i say he, he's got to watch more netflix for me you can get yourself <laughs> right off oh and, and I, I, i'll tell you what kaz the only things i will watch on netflix are french shark films set under the river saying no I think all Tom, those Tom's i'm already watch. watching that all I, would, those I, I will watch. can't wait for that that sounds brills i think he, he, when he joined us he said but only if i can watch all shark related movies i said to something be, along those lines yeah i yeah. did that's true to be mm. fair he deserves it after the requin I, st I still don't know what that word means it's a type of shark is it are you sure well, i'm pretty sure yeah mm, okay <laughs> anyway <laughs> fallout <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, I've played. I've spent many hours sunk into Fallout Three on my trusty Xbox. I I was a little nervous after the dour load of old arse that was Silo, because this is exactly how this starts. Uh, you'll know, people who've played the game will know it's set. Nearly 200 years, nearly 300 years in the future, there's been a nuclear war. Uh, mankind has been sequestered into various underground vaults uh, to survive the horrors of the desolate wasteland. And, you know, stuff happens. But what this gets absolutely spot on is it hits that 
absolute sweet spot of beautiful design that has a real eye for detail for the game. So fans of the game will be, Tom sent a very good meme, uh, the infamous Leonardo DiCaprio meme of, <gasps> like that, and he's right, you're doing that every five to five, six, seven minutes. But it blends it with some really good characters. Ella Pinnell in this is just an absolute hoot. She is cornbread Americana one minute while smashing someone's brain in with a pipe and then apologizing for inconveniencing her dead victim. It's got a dry sense of humor uh, that runs throughout. Walton Goggins is just ace as a... Walton Goggins. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. That's what I said. No, I, I as Walton Goggins. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, He's nasally challenged in this, but that he is, you know, he, he may only be 98% Walton Goggins, but that's good enough. <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm also digging so far, and I it has to yes. be said, I have only seen the first two episodes, but I'm liking yeah. the way it's weaving some interesting narrative through all of that and bringing it all together. There's some really interesting stuff here with three plot strands. Uh, I won't go into the detail, it's all in the written review, but so far, I expected this to be a complete dog's dinner. Even though I enjoyed the Halo TV series up to a point, the trailers for this had me feeling it was going to be worse than that. Couldn't be any further from from the truth. This has been absolutely joyous so far, two episodes in, and I'm one of the very few that I'm going to carry on all the way through to the bitter end. If for nothing other than to mock Tom about how yeah. he's about it all, I it's like it's okay. I'm like I don't mind it. It's fine, but I'm yeah. But I've never yeah. seen, I've never played the games, and I. I think it's pretty good, actually. The, the, the world building is pretty armor, good. The power armor is very cosplay y and very <laughs> like, like somebody's put like styro, it's, it's spray painted styro. It doesn't look very heavy. Uh, wow. That's because it like, uh, it's real, wow. isn't it? The blokes in the suit moving it around. So it's is not going it? to be made out of actual iron, is it? <laughs> no, obviously, it's not going to be made out of actual iron. <laughs> the I, way, just, the way I just mean it's the very. Armor. It's very this, obviously TV eyes. And the length of the episodes, those are the two things yeah, we're ragging like on it. shit for tonight. No! I, when, I, when, well, yeah, yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> when you say the power armor doesn't look like heavy enough, all I can picture is uh, Jesse Ventura from Running Man when he has to get like plated up in the army. He's like, I'm not wearing it's, this it's stuff. Almost <laughs> as good as that. Is it? Uh, almost as good. I might watch it then. It's okay. <laughs> um... Good stuff on Netflix. I was about to say you should watch more Netflix, Mark, and that's because I turned on uh, Ripley and and I went, no, not for me. I watched like the first 15 minutes. Not for me. It's black and white. It's deeply pretentious and nothing was happening. I was not having it. I was like, I, I like I like Andrew Scott and uh, no, no. And then for some reason, I mean, I'm, I, I don't know. I'm glutton for Netflix punishment, literally on my tombstone. I turned it back on a couple of days later, binged it. I must have watched the whole thing in a day. And uh, I, I absolutely loved it. I, I thought it was tremendous. And the black and white worked. It's a beautiful show. Andrew Scott is tremendous. He's, I think for me, it's... It goes much deeper and darker than the than the movie, which I also enjoyed, but didn't have anywhere near this kind of ability to extract tension out of tiny, very Hitchcockian situations. You know, you're up in a flat, you know that people are after you. The phone rings, and it just stays with the phone ringing, and then he doesn't pick it up. And then he goes outside to look over the balcony down the stairwell and see who it is, is asking for him. And then he hears who it is. And then he goes back in the flat and then he has to wait the footsteps that come up the stairs. Oh my God, they extract so much tension out of it. I bloody hope I've, so. I've, Cause yeah, sounds you've got to boring. do a better bloody job of it than you just did. Cat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very, very meticulously drawn Charm. It's really good. It's proper Hitchcock style. It's very nice. All right, so it's, it's not. It's, it's not flash. You're not sold at all. You will never stick it on, Mark. <laughs> it is. It's good TV. Your your allergies are flaring. 
Um, hey, hey! D- d- no, no, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> and again, we come to Civil War. Did you expect this to be our number one pick, nine out of ten? Man, I was, I was expecting to like it because, by and large, I like an Alex Garland movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I just picked out in the review I wrote for Civil War that it generally I like Alex Gala movies like with a little asterisk to say like but he does tend to like mess it up at the end the very end of the movie um yeah the, not this time oh my goodness this is maybe the first time I've uh, watched an Alex Gala movie and all the way through gone I understand why this is in the film and like it's maybe a big swing or it's maybe like uh really grotesque or brutal but i get why it needs to be here which is not always the case with uh with his films particularly with men which was just yeah i i it was the best thing in the that, whole film tom yeah i won't i won't what uh, yeah anyway so the <laughs> civil war was looking forward to it because i thought what we're going to have is kind of like a a broad ish satire on political division nope it sure ain't that it is uh it goes out of its way to not be that um and it's all the better for it it's more like um garland's way of criticizing um the way that the news is reported or recorded and it's just quite a subtle film despite its real graphic violence at parts um and yeah just absolutely gripping hour and 45 minutes i don't know i'm stuck on run times today oh, <laughs> i guess what i mean is that it's really tightly paced and yeah. it, it just whizzes by and you are engrossed all the way through in the journey of four um war correspondents who are reporting ostensibly on this modern u.s civil war and um, Kirsten Dunst is in it, and she is fantastic. Uh, Stephen McKinley Henderson, who has been in other Alex Garland stuff like uh, Devs, he is absolutely blinding in it and is just um, perfect um, casting. And it's just really a really hard and sobering watch, and it all just works with what... Um, Alex Garland seems to be trying to do. And at the end of the film, I didn't feel like I agreed with his opinion, but I liked that he had like shared it with me in such an interesting way. So nice. uh, Yeah. You gotta go see it. It's it's brilliant. I do. I I I mean I need to. I need to see it. Yes. It sounds absolutely tremendous. It does definitely definitely on the list. I'm not sure whether I'll IMAX it, but what were we? You know when we did the our anticipated scores, didn't we score this quite highly at the start of the year? I thought. Well, don't ask me that. I think so. Yeah, so I don't think it's come as a surprise that it's. I think it's come as a surprise. It's as good. Did it? Yeah. Did it come as a surprise that that after watching the trailer, though? I think we're all a bit. Yeah, it's. Is this? It, are they going to pull it off? It's going to be the division video game adaptation. Yeah, much, didn't yeah. yeah. Is, is cool. what we were talking about. Oh, we yeah, gave the... uh, Godzilla vs Kong a seven. Let's have a look. And we gave Driveway Dolls a seven. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Civil War, we gave an eight. Yeah. All of us. Eights across the board. Mm-hmm. There we go. I, I, I would say I was surprised it got a nine. Yeah. Thought it was going to be good. It was phenomenal. Excellent. Hurrah. Yeah. Very nice. Very, very. Uh, a quick shout out. Um, I've just started Sean Penn's latest uh, straight to Amazon movie. It's called Asphalt City, but they renamed it to the utterly bland black files in the UK because they want no one to watch it, which is fine. <laughs> but um, it's uh, it's pretty good so far. It's uh, it's definitely paramedic training day. So he's he's the Denzel Washington of the day. I, I haven't got to the stage where he's the Denzel Washington of the day, <laughs> but uh, but it's very stylishly shot. Uh, it's very nicely put together, and um, and it comes to Amazon. By the time this goes out, 
people already have seen it so it's uh, it's getting a nod in there because i was going to put it in the we haven't covered it but it gets a nod and i am halfway through baby reindeer maybe you've heard of it guys i don't know not until we spoke about it just now yeah and mark's nodding his head in a kind of a, that's on netflix so i don't do that <laughs> or, okay <laughs> yeah okay well baby reindeer based on a true story comedian gets stalked um very subtly you know it's like a very innocuous to begin with uh it's fabulously unraveled uh, uh, i just recently found out that it's pl it played the guy who is the central actor was the guy who was stalked in real life and Ooh. it's uh it's very very nicely done uh, it's deeply uncomfortable cringing close your eyes tv loads of bad decisions loads a bit, of a bit like our poddy then yeah it's, it's, yeah pretty much pretty much but they can when they listen to the just the audio version they don't have to yeah. go through all of this um anyway highly recommended very very binge binge worthy put it on 30 minute episodes 30 minute episodes <laughs> all <laughs> dropped at once all right okay oh. <laughs> Um, our discussion of the month is what makes a 10 out of 10 movie and tv show and um i did a bit of research into this and it, 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 we had a lot of nines recently we had uh civil war ripley fallout uh simon gave kind hearts and coronets nine uh we gave abyss primal fear blood on satan's claw all of us strangers starman wages of fear Godzilla minus one, Killers of the Flower Moon, Peeping Tom, Culprits, Conan, Holdovers, and Fargo. This is just in the last year. Uh, tens are really quite rare. And looking at uh, like the stats as I've laid them out, it's interesting to see what we give tens because almost all of um, our tens are for older films that have graduated into classic territory so uh psycho wicker man uh, drive robocop pulp fiction you know all the ones you can get away with giving tens to um the newer ones are really rare i'm the one who keeps giving them out apparently so i gave tens to both dunes dune part one and dune two maverick uh the bear and andor uh tom gave one ten in all of his reviewing well two tens what's the other ten no my no bland oh i didn't go back that far and he went, went back five years is it in there five years yeah. ago oh my god oh, okay well i went back five years and got blind clearly so two tens four things and nomadland yeah Tom gave oppenheimer a 10 out of 10 and mark gave a 10 out of 10 to picard this is in recent only time. season three yeah, I, don't know, I, I don't know whether i mean <laughs> what what my statement of that wasn't to to reveal some kind of well, why does mark give high scores to tv well, statement i was trying to say that we all <clears throat> seem to be reluctant to giving tens to things that are relatively new i i'm slightly less reluctant but you guys go and see movies a lot a lot of movies probably more movies at the cinema than i do but um a 10 out of the gate is really elusive really elusive and it's mm -hmm. and it's interesting that we can look back retrospectively at all of these great films and they are great films slap a 10 on ratha khan and it's fine no one's going to quibble with a 10 on maltese falcon but it's harder with newer stuff that hasn't had that time to kind of sink into into the audience either that or they just don't make 10 out of 10 movies anymore which is what mark's thinking well, well, anyway more, isn't it more to do with us as reviewers well because we, that's what we grew up with we grew up with all we, of these we, movies we, we've been doing it for so long um it takes that much more to be an impression to to be that 10 out of 10. Mm. Uh, I, I don't think so uh of, of the reviews that i've done for avf I've given 13 tens. 13. For the movies? Yeah. Well, a combination of movies, 4Ks, and Blu rays. So, for example, Past Lives, Blu ray, 10 out of 10 in one of my, one of my monthly roundups. 
No, I gave, no, just just the movie. You gave yep. Past Lives the movie ten out yep. of ten. Yep, uh, I gave two recent nice. documentaries ten out of ten: the Squaring the Circle, the story of hypnosis, and the RoboDoc documentary. You know, the five and a half hour. Mm -hmm, the yeah, you are yeah. quite right, Mark. I haven't gone through all your top ten. No, well, yeah, you 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 weren't expected to, but but it's. I don't think that it's a newness factor. I think that it comes back to that for a 10 out of 10, for me, I'm speaking just for me here, it's more than just the film that pushes it over into a 10 out of 10. It's where you saw it, when you saw it, how you saw it, where you were in your life, all those 10s out of 10s that I can think of. The film occupies a place of something more within me that's what pushes it into a 10 doc uh, a, a 10 category past lives you know very very reminiscent of a very personal experience that that had me sort of <laughs> almost all the way through it and it's the same for the tens that i've given it's so it's not that it's just we don't like new shit. We only like old shit. No, I, I don't mean. I, I, I don't think, mean that. I no, no, I, I know what you mean, but I think it, it's back to 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 what Simon said, although from a slightly different angle. I think it is absolutely us that makes the difference between a film being a nine out of ten or a ten out of ten. Does that mm. make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, well, we we definitely tip it across the line. Mm. I mean, yeah, it, there's a lot of. Um, subjectivity obviously that goes into reviewing but there's a lot of subjectivity in the nine to ten transition unless mm. you have 40 years of it's a classic behind you where you feel much more um the other way around you'd have to have a subjective reason to not give it a 10 out of 10 if it's like citizen kane or casablanca you'd have to really go this is this one didn't work for me to drop it down and even then it would only be a nine i think it's the, it's the difference isn't it between seeing something for the first time and seeing something for the fifth time and the you're awarding that you're pushing it over the line for different reasons in each of those cases mm -hmm. like 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 mark and Simon were saying if <clears throat> if you're seeing something for the first time and not only are you understanding everything that the film is trying to do, and the film is trying to do all those things, and it gets everything right, it also then does something for you mm. as a person. Whereas the thing that's pushing, for example, say Pulp Fiction or Citizen Kane or something like that over the mm. line from a 9 to a 10 is it has had cultural impact. It's not just important to me, but it is important almost universally and you yeah. just can't know that when something is you know when it's you're new. seeing this yeah. on opening mm. day you can't know like the cultural like universality of something so you're you're seeing it with like two two perspectives and um yes probably seeing pulp fiction for the first time in my life i would have said that's a 10 out of 10 movie like this doesn't get better yeah but, yeah it's, you I know think... like your other yeah. example like robocop the first time I watched that, I probably would have been like, yay, this is amazing. Because I would have been like, you know, <laughs> nine years old. Um, but, yeah. but you look back and you see, oh my goodness, objectively, yeah. this film has some wonky bits, but such an impact that can't be ignored. Mm. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd agree with that. I mean, it's it's hard to it's hard not to fold in a little bit, and this is a future podcast, but like the, the notion that we make a few too many movies and we have too many movies to watch. I, I, I'm not saying that in a really, mm. I'm, I, I'm just saying in the sense that you know, back in the day, I would have seen, I don't know, Heat three times at the cinema, Drive three mm. times at the cinema, Leon three times at the cinema. They just weren't, and, and this, that isn't even that far back, like 20 years ago, but I'm not talking about like 30 years ago. I'm not talking about even Robocop days. I'm talking about a period of time where I would have seen these movies multiple times because they were the best thing in the cinema and they were there for a while because there weren't loads of other things to displace them. I mean, if you could see Drive multiple times in the cinema, I mean, it's not a big movie. It shows that there weren't, it wasn't a lot of stuff coming out all at the same time. These days, 
there's there's so much at the cinema so much on streaming so much going on mm. i don't often re-watch movies they have to be quite special for me to re-watch them i'm more likely to re-watch a movie i've just picked up in 4k which is a classic already that i've already watched 10 times it, it's it's weird the it's like the new ones don't get the chance to ever graduate and i don't necessarily know whether they warrant it but i mean i, I can't <laughs> No, that, that 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 that's really interesting, Kaz, because I don't know about you guys, but my opinions change on a film as I watch it again and again and again and again. And I I, I do watch a lot of films and therefore I do do a lot of rewatches. And there are films that the first time out the gate I watched, I thought, meh, mm, it was all right. And then I will pick up a new super duper arrow 4K or singing old dancing box set because you know. FOMO, you're you. What what can <laughs> I say? Exactly. And I'll watch it again and I'll go, holy shit, yeah, that 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 film is is actually better than I thought it was. And then of course, you know, criterion will release an even super duper revision a few years later, and I'll pick it up again and I'll watch that again. And I think back to what you said there, I think it's not just the multiple viewings lets it sink into your subconscious. I think it's all I there's so many films that I've watched out the gate, didn't really like, but they. But the times I've watched them again, I feel like they are better and better and better. And go the other way. There's films I thought were absolutely yeah, yeah. amazing. Which have gone, yeah. I, I mean, you know, I have, an, well, I did have an almost undying love for Kurt Wimmer's Equilibrium. I mean, let's be honest. When I saw Gun <laughs> Carter, I thought this is the most amazing thing I have ever seen in my in how, my entire how, life. How quickly can we fire Mark? <laughs> I know, I love but that. but on subsequent rewatches, you do kind of go, "Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh it's not, yeah, it's not really but, that good, is it?" But I like that. But oh, you're, yeah. gonna, you're gonna hold on to that love for stealth, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, now we're stealth, talking. Stealth is a, stealth is an eleven out of ten every yeah. day of the stealth, week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm, I, I have I have this delirious feeling that I I gave stealth a ridiculously high score, but it, it wasn't eleven. No, no, but you, know what, but you know what, Kaz, that that comes on so. to. I think that then comes on to there are there are the ten out of ten that are objectively excellent films, and then the ones and that then are there are the tens out of ten which are utter crap but you adore for some warped messed up reason i don't know, you know? I, I don't I, know how uh, often i've given a 10 out of 10 to utter crap i mean oh. I, I might have stretched it across the line on, on a couple but yeah i don't i don't, I just, I don't think uh, i could for, i don't think i could find it in myself to give a guilty pleasure a 10 out of 10 because at the back oh. of my mind there's always something that's like yeah, but I know it's not. Like, <laughs> I I know it's a bit shit. What <laughs> joyless asses! You know, you know, you know what? I say all of this, <laughs> and I'm all. looking, I'm looking at the list, and I gave Brotherhood of the Wolf a ten out of ten, and I gave Point Break a ten out of ten. They're both sitting in there amongst Back to the Future, Ratha Khan, Carlito's Ways, really easy ones to justify. Mm. Point Break and Brotherhood of the Wolf. Are sitting there and there. Brother the Wolf out of is, Wolf is, is objectively yeah, astounding. But, the, but we're sure, talking about it's... stuff that's like, yeah, uh, you yeah, know, I'm, I'm talking the the room. Yeah, that's what I thought. Like, I was thinking, like, why would uh, I give the room a ten out of ten? <laughs> oh, 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 all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so here you go. Here's the, here's an example from my. Give me a Seagal example. I'll relate yeah, to exit, it. But... Exit wounds, right? No, it's exit like wounds six or a seven. <laughs> you, like... I, I have watched that. Yeah. More than a lot of films. It's, it's <laughs> great, great, absolute that a trash. No, I could yeah. never give it. A ten. Maybe a seven. Maybe I gave it a seven on site, and even then, I was like, "Oh, really? Mm, yeah, okay, yeah." Okay. But I had a blast. But yeah. it doesn't get a ten out of ten blast. Ah, ah, okay. But you two only review films for the site. Don't you? Well, yes, but you only review films for the site, don't you? What you just do tens on the side on Letterboxd? <laughs> You're yeah. like ten to this, ten to that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so ba basically, everything I score five or below on the site, I sneak, <laughs> sneak off and give give it ten out of ten on Letterboxd. <laughs> oh, oh, vice versa, like Mark's 
Mark's real opinion is on Letterbox. Like, <laughs> exactly. If you exactly. if you want to go and see what he really what thinks, of old ass. What, yeah. does, what does Mark really think about Ghostbusters Afterlife? It's on Letterbox, <laughs> and it's like a three out of ten. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I yes. Review number two. Tom was right. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I want from life. Jungle Cruise, ten out of ten. Tom was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, I mean, I so I obviously feel feel very different. I mean, the, the thing for me that makes me laugh is Tammy and the T Rex. You never heard of this? Mm-hmm. Oh mm. my god! I think no. it was Paul Walker's and Denise Richards's debut, and it was made in 1993 because a an entrepreneur discovered a fun fair with a crappy t-rex and it was just before jurassic park was coming out and he said i'm gonna hop on this gravy train made the most rubbish film about a boyfriend getting killed and having his brain transplanted <laughs> into the animatronic t-rex this is just you mark it's like <laughs> but no you right. can't give this a 10 out yes. of 10 <laughs> yes i can and yes i have <laughs> Just because like Scream Factory put on a 4K disc doesn't mean it's a good film. I don't. It's Vinegar I don't. Syndrome, actually. Vinegar Syndrome. Oh my God. <laughs> and do you know what? I didn't buy it. That's one of the few 4Ks I haven't got. Oh, uh, thank God, because we would have had a 10 out of 10 review. Darn too, Tammy and the T Rex. Darn too. And that'll teach the site to let me have it as a platform. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, but but in all seriousness, I mean, I, I know you you lot probably wouldn't go that far, but there are films that I just know. I mean, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. That is a film that means so much to me, and I've seen so many times. And I would watch that any day of the week over your Cool Hand Luke's or your Maltese Falcons or your Casablancas. And does, that, to me, what, does that make it what, a ten out what, of ten? Then? What, 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 what? <laughs> so hang on. So I've got I've got a choice here, and I've got all those classics, and I've got Killer Clowns, and I choose Killer Clowns. I mean, I'm not being funny. What more do you want to make it a ten? <laughs> I know, but I do that with Seagal, but that doesn't make any of his films ten out of ten. That just doesn't, and absolutely not. They're terrible films. Uh... He's got terrible hair. <laughs> really, it's really not. It's not on. But uh, come on, I get. I have. Uh... I have a blast watching them that when they're bad, they're so bad that they're entertaining. I'm never going to give them a 10. I'm going to respect the fact that it's entertaining me. But I appreciate I appreciate your passion, which I think is interesting because I think that's a part of um, what works for us in movies, not just our passion for them, but also when we respond to the passion that is shown in the movies. Mm. When they make a movie... Yeah. That, that feels like they really put everything into it. And that, I think that that's a huge part of it. Um, I, I, you know, it's hard not to draw on recent ones, but like Top Gun Maverick, I felt like everyone put a, a thousand percent into, into what they achieved in that. And I had a fantastic experience watching it. And no one's going to agree with it being a 10 out of 10 movie, which is why I gave it 11 out of 10 for like its first hour when it was live on site and no one noticed. Um, I, it was an absolute, absolute blast. And I can see the where the subjectivity comes in there. I can see where sitting in the cinema room and having my son sit on me and use me as a cockpit and fly my thumbs as we're going around corners, uh, where that all informs my opinion of it. Um, so that does go into it, but it's also they crafted it with this passion and this dedication. Uh, and it was evident in June for me, a real Villanueva's really going, I'm going to put everything on screen. I'm going to I'm going to use every camera angle, maximum effort. I'm going to spend, you know, like six weeks preparing for one shot of a worm coming out of the sand. You know, he really... It really feels like a, a labor of love. And I think that that's across the board for a lot of the films I love. They've had to have had that level of effort put in. Um, I think that's what works for me. I'm not sure Seagal quite puts that level of effort in, but you know, we'll say that he does, you know. I think he sits down for most of his scenes these days. He does these days. He used to, he used to occasionally stand. <laughs> like, no, the best the best memes are running. His best memes are running. 
He does Three. the flappy arm thing. It's fantastic. <laughs> I love the flappy arm thing. Ten out of ten for the flappy arm. But, but, yeah. but I mean, does, doesn't this ultimately come down to a discussion that the four of us have had many, many times, which is scores are a load of old guff. It, yes, yes, <laughs> it, it, it and does. we'd really rather not put an arbitrary number on them. Oh, I loved putting an eleven on Maverick. <laughs> I really loved that. I took screenshots and put it up on the wall. It, you know, it's I really. I, I mean, I, I mean, you know, we know people like to have a number, and yes. most of the time, it feels like people don't read the thousand words you spent hours yes. you've got to get over this mark go, you've got to get oh, so, sorry when i say people I'm, i mean kaz uh, you know, I, I i agree with you they don't and it's don't. fine but yeah. but uh, but if it was down to me i wouldn't stick a number because it because you're right i mean what is the difference between a nine out of ten? ultimately what we've just talked about here what makes the difference between a 9 out of 10 is something almost unknowable that is yeah. wholly personal to yeah, you. Yeah, it's something within yourself. Yeah, mm. you know, and, and a little it. bit that, that classic status that it's graduated yeah. over time. A little bit. Yeah, little okay. Bit. okay. Yeah. No, but, but, because but, again, I... but, but again, I would still say that those those 10s out of 10s, they still mean something. I mean, otherwise, you know, why is Cool Hand Luke for me a 9.5, whereas American Graffiti is a 10? So it's not just all, you know. I don't know, Mark. I don't exactly. know. Cool exactly. hand looks a ten. I think, like... I think that was a rhetorical question. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Uh, so, it, and of course, none of that lends itself to what we're being asked to do, which is to to help others. <laughs> you know, yeah. Know whether or not something is worth watching, and yet we're all sat here saying, "Well, the, the, the top mark is solely for me, not for anyone else. It's solely for me." So I think. I, I think I think you're right. I think it what tips it over the line is a lot to do with uh, a personal thing. But I do think that um, the passion that they put in, we respond to. I think mm -hmm. the ideas they come up with, if they come up with a particular hook, worked back in the day a lot more mm -hmm. than it does now because we're seeing a lot of remakes. But the hook of like Back to the Future or the hook of, I don't know, Robocop, a, a good idea really yeah. can set off a good movie. And I know, I know that seems really obvious, but it seems like a lot of the time, quite rightly, we go, we're running out of ideas. And I don't think that's true. I think it's just the good ideas often don't translate to the movies we see at the cinema. Um, but a good idea, a, a bit of creativity, a, a lot of passion. It's, and... it's, it's got to catch you off guard as well. It's yeah. got to be more than you expect, basically. Mm. Yes. There's got to be an element of it which is like... Um, uh, doing doing something that would never have occurred to you or you know yeah making yeah. making you feel or think in a way that never would have occurred to you without having seen yes that yes. that piece of filmmaking and that just like you described in civil war that idea that it's uh giving you something that doesn't occur to you and makes you think about it afterwards mm. yeah i think that thinking mm. about it afterwards is the reason why people rewatch movies sometimes? I'm not saying they don't also watch them just for sheer maverick entertainment, but you know, like I, I that really sat with me. There are some themes and some ideas that that really appealed to me. There, I might want to go through and and see see how that worked from the beginning. See how that mean mm. means more to me. I think that things that stay with you give you pause for thought. I think that's what Tom just said is really interesting about expectations. For me, you know, we talk about we only see the majority of modern films once. Mm. Uh, so many times expectations banana skin me because I'll watch a trailer, I'll I'll read another review, you know, or, or, or I'll hear something and suddenly my expectations go, this film's going to be the best thing I've ever seen. Why do you do that? I, I, but I can't help it. Oh. I can't help it. Too positive, man. So yeah, well, yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty much. But so, so many times, the my expectation going in scuppers my view coming out, and that's that's again why I watch films. Again, you know, the expectations are gone uh, at that point. So maybe that's why it helps me on a second and a third watch, where I start to feel better about the film. So yeah, Mark all, just all, likes all these... films. He's a real weirdo. Yeah. Uh, no, you, you know what? I love films so much that I can't abide modern trailers. 
I mean, I very rarely, I only watched the Godzilla one because I didn't think I was reviewing it. And I was like, eh, it's Godzilla. Is it really going to spoil the movie for me? Yeah, but, it really did that trailer. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> but like, I never watched a single trailer of uh, Dune 2. Not one. And I feel like these days, they don't, you know, they don't often make good trailers the yeah, way they the used to. trailer making as a podcast there, aren't they? Well, it's it really is an AI style of you've got two and a half minutes, three minutes to play with here. Tell me the entire movie with mm. flash images yeah. and a few words in the background. I mean, it's it's really going for it. I mean, there have been a few good ones. The one for Maverick, the one for the early one for um, Winter Soldier. You know, there there are some some good trailers out there. But then there's the later one for Winter Soldier, which shows you the ending to the film. They're like, why? Mm. So, uh, I mean, I, you know, if <laughs> in films that I'm going to see at the cinema, I do not watch yeah. the trailers. I do not want any false anticipation or concern. I, I just, wish I had your willpower. Harlan. Yeah, but if it's if you're going to see it, if you're just going to see it, then what good is going to come out of that trailer? Well, you can tell me that, but that doesn't stop me watching the Alien Romulus trailer five times, and then God knows how many reaction videos to the Alien Romulus trailer. I, I have seen a clapperboard <laughs> with an alien. That's all I've seen. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do Despite I do you myself? pinging me and going, that's how to do a great trailer. I'm no, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not doing it. Anyway, I wasn't pinging that to you, I was pinging it to Tom and Simon actually. <laughs> Yeah, well played. I didn't watch it either. Cows <laughs> really Get trod. Yeah. Uh, anyway, are we done yet, Kaz? We are done. We are done. This um, podcast has been a three out of ten. What, in your opinion? <laughs> no, no. Just you wait till the comments come in. I think you'll find in everyone's opinion. Oh my god, they're all going to give scores. <laughs> scores. Um, do let us know if there's anything we haven't covered that you think we should check out. Uh, that's it for the AV Forums Movies and TV podcast this week. Thanks to the Movies team. If you enjoyed this podcast, please give us a like and subscribe to the channel, plus hit the notification bell so you don't miss out when we publish our live streams, product reviews, and more. If you really like the podcast, then buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash avforums. You can follow us on Twitter and Facebook and bookmark avforums.com for the latest reviews, news, and videos. Plus, why not leave us a five-star rating? <laughs> Or a 10 out of 10 on whichever <laughs> service you use if they allow it, but only if you enjoyed the show. Thank you for watching and listening and join us for another podcast real soon. Bye.